everyone. Welcome back to Camper Jazz and today we are at the beautiful Banff. We came here last night um, as a group. There was David and Lindsay Benison from Desmond's Donders and we were joined by uh, Phil from Small Vehicle Campers. Uh, we said goodbye to Gillian who had previously been travelling with us and she runs um, the lovely Situtery Air. Uh, check it out on Facebook. So it's actually a nice day and we're going for a walk on the beach. Come on you two, walk tidy. I know, Phil's over in the distance with his dog Ruby and uh, if they get together not much gets done, they just bark at each other. So we're staying a little bit distant. And this is known as Inverbody Beach and behind us is the Inverbody Caravan Park. Uh, Banff is a little ways over in the distance. We've walked down towards Inverbody Beach and now we're on our way back. And sorry about the wind noise, it is pretty blustery, but it was the perfect evening for a walk and uh, we were really the only people there. Uh, I thought we could show you the beach nicely and the sun is just beginning to go down. And on days like today, I still love car life. There are days when it's wet, when it's not so much fun, when you're sat in the car all day, uh, the doggies get wet when you go out, but when it turns out to be a beautiful day, there's nothing better than just enjoying it. So here we are in the grounds of Duff House in Banff. I'm here with Lindsay Benison of Desmond's Donders. And we've come for a Sunday afternoon stroll around Duff House. And um, I think the best thing we can do is head on in and take a look around. Oh, and you will notice that there are no doggies attached to me. They are, in fact, uh, spending the afternoon in Desmond, which is the motorhome belonging to Lindsay and David, otherwise known on their YouTube channel as Desmond's Donders. So, so when you enter the house, uh, it's run by Historic Environment Scotland. Uh, you can get in free if you're a member or there is a charge. Uh, you're taken to a small cinema where there is a film telling you all about the house. There are also some really helpful volunteers dotted around the house to answer any questions. So originally Duff House was intended as the chief seat of William Duff, uh, also known as Lord Braco, later the first Earl of Fife. And the house was designed by the architect William Adam, who uh, designed the impressive Baroque mansion and work began in 1735. Unfortunately, there was a falling out between Lord Braco and Adam, which resulted in a five-year court battle, which Adam won. Unfortunately, he died before he could collect the debt owed to him, and Lord Braco ended up never spending as much as a single night sleeping in the house. The original plans are on display in the house and showed that originally it was intended for two grand curved east and west wings, but these were never built. And it ended up being left to Lord Braco's heirs to complete 
the work on the house and uh, the grounds were landscaped between the late 1790s and into the 1800s. The house was built around six staircases which act as vertical corridors and on the second floor were a great salon and a drawing room mainly used for entertaining whilst the family who occupied the house mainly used the rooms on the first floor. When a royal marriage took place the princess decided she preferred living in one of their other houses and so they decided to give the house to the people of Banff. The contents were sold in 1906 and then the house was adapted for use as a hotel in 1911. It became a sanatorium for nutritional disorders from 1913 to 1923 and then a hotel again until 1928. The dining room here contains uh, some of the very few original items belonging to the family, uh, which included the gold candelabras, chandelier and crusted tableware, all of which had been recovered and returned to the house, purchased at auctions, etc., During the Second World War, the house was used as an internment camp, a prisoner of war camp, and HQ for various Allied regiments. In 1940, a bombing raid killed six German prisoners and two guards and injured many others. It also demolished uh, part of the new wing that had been added onto the house. In 1942, it became the HQ of the Norwegian Brigade and after the war it was the base for, so for the Polish soldiers awaiting resettlement in Scotland. Many of the rooms at Duff House have quite impressive 18th century decorative features. Unfortunately, because the contents are not original, Although uh, the house has been redecorated, it hasn't been redecorated in the style of the traditional family home. So you don't have all of the upper rooms decorated as bedrooms, etc. Uh, you have a third floor which has an exhibition area and the house is part of uh, the National Galleries of Scotland, so it is used to display uh, works by Gainsborough, Rayburn and El Greco and it also houses the Dunimal Library uh, with a collection of over 4,000 rare volumes which uh, are not publicly available to view but can be uh, viewed upon appointment. And I think both Lindsay and I agreed on the fact that it didn't feel like a traditional country house estate that had been preserved from the time that the last owners handed it over. Uh, it's much more a collection of artworks and items that have been put together. However, here we have the Crested China, and we have the family candelabras that bear the family crest and a few original pieces in the main dining room. And the chandelier was purchased at auction and returned here. Anyway, the house uh, by the 1950s had fallen into a state of disrepair and basically um, Banff Council decided to hand it over into state care. Plans were drawn up to restore it. Uh, it did not actually reopen until 1995, completely restored and as a country house gallery. 
There are extensive grounds giving you walks along the River Deverin. And there is also a Duff family Gothic mausoleum situated in the grounds. Now this is the tapestry room which um, these are beautiful and unfortunately the photos do not do them justice. It doesn't pick up the intricate work and the colours um, but uh, we both enjoyed looking at those. And at the uh, chandelier which is now electric but which would have been oil and then possibly gas. And I think the lady said that the original piping is still there. Um, the stunning fireplace, which looks like a Wedgwood design. So there are lots of features in the house that are well worth looking at. And uh, our only disappointment on the day was that it has a tea room. Being a Sunday, when there were lots of visitors... They decided not to open it, which was a real shame. But anyway, as you leave the house, there is the obligatory gift shop selling all sorts of things, including shortbread, cakes and fudge. So um, I treated myself to a bag of vanilla fudge, not tablet. I find that far too sweet. Anyway, I'm going to leave you now with uh, the rest of the tour and at the end you'll see um, part of the exhibition from the third floor which contained a model of Duff House as it was originally intended to look. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have at the end, please give it a like, share it on social media and uh, of course... If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe and click the little bell to get notified of our next video. And currently we are trying to upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays at 7am. Thank you for watching and I'll leave you to look at the rest of Duff House.
Yeah. And 